one of the real crises facing Australia is the mismatch between available jobs and skills. Only yesterday, the mining industry called for more to be done to prevent a skills shortage. We've talked about that before on this program, but I have a view that only when you're sick of talking about it is someone in government going to listen. The Australian Mines and Metals Association, the industry's peak body, estimates more than 20,000 additional workers, skilled workers, will be needed in the next five years. And they rightly say there needs to be better nurturing of the skills pipeline. More than a quarter of all these jobs, they say, will be needed in Queensland. That's the good news. The bad news is school leavers are too often encouraged into university, which may not be in their best interests. Here, the mining industry is saying, get a skill, get into the industry, make a quid. Well, recent Department of Employment research confirms the conclusions of the mining industry. It shows almost one in two employers is struggling to hire workers, including in 31 out of the 33 regional areas where unemployment is high. Employers are having to extend workers' hours and look interstate and overseas to fill the vacancies. Employers say they can't recruit machinery operators and drivers, technicians, trade staff, managers, professionals. I might add, though, do these employers answer job applications? Do they employ people over 60? But these jobs require skills, and we don't have the skilled workforce to meet employment demands. And this highlights a significant weakness in the education system to which I've just referred, vocational education and training. As one of the heads of a Sydney-based plumbing firm said recently, once my generation retires, God help the plumbing industry. Now, plumbing and bricklaying are amongst the top five occupations with skill shortages. Yet, bricklayers earn an average weekly wage of $2,700 last year. Plumbers, a weekly average of $1,894. The average adult weekly wage is $1,666. Are we pushing school leavers towards university rather than vocational training, regardless of opportunities. I think students need better information about careers. Are we job snobs? Recently, a new report emerged from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. It covers all sorts of ground, including that despite growth in the workforce, the popularity of apprenticeships has fallen to its lowest level in 20 years. 267,400 Australians were working as apprentices and trainees last year compared with 336,000 in 2014. Last year, there were 161,700 first-year apprentices. That's down from 377,000 in 2012. And last year, for the first time, apprentice dropout rates exceeded completion rates. Now, in the context of all this, I got an email recently from a listener about a place called the Australian Industry Trade College. Now, Mum and Dad, listen up. It's based at Rabina on the Gold Coast, although they also have campuses at Ipswich, Redlands, Maroochydore and Toowoomba. And my listener wrote to say his 16-year-old son, who previously struggled at a private school, was thriving at this college. We'll talk to the CEO in a moment, but I'm told the college focuses on getting Year 10, 11 and 12 students their QCE, Queensland Certificate of Excellence, plus an apprenticeship in the trade of their career of their choice. I'm told the college model is based on a learning cycle of five weeks academic learning, followed by five weeks on-site learning with an employer. I'm told more than 90% of students graduate with full-time apprenticeships and most go straight into a job. And I'm told employers love the college because they get skilled, enthusiastic, trained and job-ready young people. My listener wrote, it's a successful win-win for all, a model that the Prime Minister and Premier should take a closer look at. Well, to find out more about the college, go to aitc.qld.edu.au, aitc.qld.edu.au. But Mark Hands is the CEO of the Australian Industry Trade College and he joins us from our Gold Coast studio, Mark. Thank you for your time. Now, look, you were established in 2008. You're obviously Correct. a success story. What are you doing? What are you doing that's good? Uh, well, um, it probably comes back to I was uh, both a scientist, a tradesman. I ended up in education. I was approached by a group of uh, local employers and leaders on the Gold Coast to basically go out and ask employers what did they want if we created an independent school. So I spent a year travelling around 
talking to anyone who would talk to me and they basically told me what employers wanted and I spoke to young people and asked them what they wanted as well. We put together a, a school, an independent senior school with a trade focus. Um, 10, 12 years later we've now graduated I think 99% of the young people with their Queensland Certificate of Education. These were young people who uh, the system had kind of given up on. Uh, not all of them, but some of them. And uh, over 90% of them have ended up uh, into employment in uh, apprenticeships, mainly apprenticeships, but also traineeships. And, Mark, how old are they and what do they have to do to be accepted? Well, um, what they do is that they apply to the college. It's an independent school. Uh, so they apply to the college after an information evening. We then put them through a selection process because one of the things employers said to us was, not everyone can be a plumber, which was an interesting thought because most people think when you can't do anything else, you'd be a tradesman. But tradesmen said to me, hey, wait on, um, I run a really high-level craftsman's business and uh, I want a certain type of young people. So we put them through a full-day selection process. We probably accept about 80% of them in. About 20% we say, you don't, you're, not mature. you're not mature enough, you're not, you don't have the skills. Um, so we, they then um, go out on a, a fairly big uh, adventure camp once they get accepted in. And uh, as you said, they come to school for five weeks. Uh, they then go out into industry for five weeks. And these are young people who actually give up their holidays to work all the school mm -hmm. holidays because finally they've found something they're good at. We mm -hmm. call it technical intelligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we recognise that, we teach to it we find that employers uh, turn around and say to us, this young person is just outstanding. Amazing. It's working very Amazing. well. Over 2,000 young people graduated mm. into employment since 2008 when we started. Peter, Peter, it's a good story. Oh, this is a fantastic story. And you've got to wonder how on earth uh, we can't get this right around the country. This is what the old TAFE system used to do, Alan, if all of our memories go back are far enough and then governments of all persuasions got in and buggered it all up. So how can we get this in other states and territories? So, Mark, well, I think the... Yep, yeah, go over on. to you. That's a good question. Look, the, uh, the, the thing I like about what we do, and there's others that are certainly uh, uh, out there swinging the bat, but the thing I like about what we've done is that it relies on local leaders, local community leaders. Uh, our board is just made up of a bunch of really enthusiastic uh, business leaders who have got behind this independent school. Uh, we access uh, government private school funding. We've actually got a relationship also with uh, some of the uh, vocational education groups around uh, the Gold Coast, around Queensland. TAFE is on board with us and uh, we out there selecting certain types of young people. We're telling them that you must be educated. You can't give up education and join a trade because that's not going to give you a long-term sustainable uh, uh, career. And uh, we've now created, um, from one small independent school on the Gold Coast, we've got four, and we're starting another one in Ipswich in, uh, in January. And really, we're looking to try and take it as far as we can across Australia. And, of course, what we're looking for is really just leaders. People are often asking me, what do you need? And I say, well, these schools are independent schools, so they're started by local communities... And uh, we've found enormous support from all the communities that we've been in, both in terms of uh, helping us get started and then helping us with the employment of young people. So I just love the idea that it's Australian people helping Australian employers with Australian young people. It's That's just a fantastic. fantastic model. It's fantastic. And look, just before we go, am I right that 92% of all students on graduation at the end of year 12 are converted into full-time apprenticeships. Now, you're talking to people all over the country here. I, I think you'd like to make an appeal to mums and dads and to some of the young people who are watching you. What would you say? Look, we find that you get a young person and you train them with good values, good character, good skills, a good education. There is employment everywhere. I have seen hundreds of employers who weren't taking on a young person. They're not going to. They get, they get the right type of young person and they create employment for them. So it is true, Alan, we've been around now for 11 or 12 years. We have averaged over 90% of the young people graduating with a senior certificate 
and a full-time job. It's a, it's a terrific outcome because it's a school that services employers and that benefits young people think, in the long term. I think term. from listening to you, Mark Hands, it's got something to do with the leadership. That's the key to it all. That's Mark Hands, who's the CEO. Now, you can check all this out. The Australian Industry Trade College. You go to AITC, which is the Australian Industry Trade College, aitc.qld.edu.au. Mums and dads and 16 and 17-year-olds, get into it. aitc.qld.edu.au. Mark, thank you for that. Peter, Peter, oh, that's a breath of fresh air, isn't it? Gee, that is the best good news story I've heard in weeks and weeks, Alan, because I, I lament, you know, when you renovate a house, you know how much you pay tradies. It's a great career, but, of course, it gets talked down or, or young kids really or parents don't know where to go and how reputable the training is, how thorough it is. That, that is just fantastic. And I also think of all the tradesmen who hit their 50s and 60s and they've, you know, basically their bodies are giving way, but they've got an enormous history of skills to impart. Wouldn't it be great to see them working in these schools and teaching young people? Absolutely. I just think it's a win-win. Uh, it is absolutely great stuff. And, of course, you watch the toilet go bung or something else go bung and you work out how hard it is to get an adequate tradesman. It's not, and there are jobs everywhere.